wave number one, I'm going to jump straight into it, is something called AI Everywhere. And AI Everywhere, AI stands for Artificial Intelligence. You probably have heard of some of these stories already. We're going to apply it to how this works with us right now. AI Everywhere, Watson won against Jeopardy a year ago. Watson was the latest from IBM computer, which basically can kind of listen to normal language. And artificial intelligence, the best way to explain artificial intelligence is the ability for a computer to do more than just calculate. It can, it can understand meaning as well, which means it has to do more than calculate. It needs to have the ability to self-learn and has the ability to be able to have a conversation in such a way that you can almost imagine that it's human. In fact, the Turing test is all about getting to the point where a computer can effectively uh, take some experts and, uh, and, and, and make them think it's a human instead of a, a computer. And that's basically the test for artificial intelligence. Well, what's Watson doing other than actually doing game show hosts? Uh, the guy there on the left who is the world champion at Jeopardy, he basically says, I'm sure that game show host will not be the last uh, um, profession that Watson will take out of business. Here's what Watson's doing today. Watson basically, first of all, after this, went and started working with the medical profession. IBM's got it working with the, uh, 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 with the um, health services in the US because it can do a better job at diagnosing than doctors can because it can know everything already. And then it can immediately say with that information what to do. Now, as you can see here, IBM's got them working with Citibank because basically Watson can take all the information about everything going on around the world and all the cycles and make split decisions, which are far better. And as you can see here, IBM expects to generate billions in new revenue by 2015 by putting Watson to work in the financial sector. Uh, and if, you, or if you're a trader already in the markets, you'll know that over 70% of all trades today already are run by computers and robots. It's not even individuals doing any of that. So over 70%. Um, hands up anyone here who has gone on holiday, even in America or around the world in the last year. Hands up. Anyone's been on holiday? OK. Hands up anyone here uh, who used things other than a travel agent, like, for example, the internet, in order to find out what you wanted to do. Isn't that interesting? Travel agents are going out of business. I'm in the, I'm in the education, uh, I'm in the education uh, industry with what we do at the Green School. Teachers are going out of business. Uh, kids, kids are learning more. If you've heard of Khan Academy, heard of Khan Academy? Khan Academy has taught so many. Like, like Salman Khan has taught more kids maths than any one teacher in the world. In fact, any one institution in the world. And he's not even a maths teacher. So, so kids are going where they need to go. We as humans are going where we need to go. The middleman as the advisor is disappearing. Doctors will disappear. Lawyers already are disappearing. Uh, as, if you're a coach or a trainer, you will disappear. This is a wake-up call that you can do it today, but it's going to last for so long before the wave disappears. So knowing what you need to go do next is really important. Uh, in, in Bali, we don't have travel agents anymore. They don't exist. But we do have people who are now, used to be travel agents, who now are taking people on experiential tours. Right? They, they've shifted what they're doing to something which people want from something people don't need anymore. So artificial intelligence is taking over all the jobs. And it will continue to do that. So this is exactly like if you heard the story about Obama when he was with Steve Jobs. Uh, this was last year before Steve Jobs passed away. And that was one of the last conversations that took place in the White House between the two, where Obama said to Steve Jobs, how can we bring back all of those jobs that have been outsourced from America with Apple? And Steve Jobs replied, you can't. Because a lot of them haven't even been outsourced to China. They've been outsourced to artificial intelligence. But in the same way, there's a whole new market, like, for example, app developers that didn't even exist before. And the people that understood that shifted that way, everything changed with them as well. So this is about knowing that everything changes here the moment our computers become more human. Uh, I had a, a, a little joke I told this time next last year. Believe it or not, this time last year, there was no Siri. Uh, this time last year, there was not a lot of different ways we could communicate in the same way we can communicate right now with our machines. I was saying that there will be a point in the future, in the near future, when all our machines will be talking to us and we'll talk back to them. In fact, we'll build relationships with our computers. I said, in fact, one of your biggest problems will become that you'll be worried whether your iPhone likes you more or less than other iPhones. <laughs> and then within the year already, Siri comes out, and now, and it's not perfect, we know that, but it's, it's going down a stage and a step which is irreversible which is our ability to actually be able to call and get information that they couldn't get before. My kids today don't even use Google anymore. They don't, if they want to find something, they don't go to Google to Google it. They go to YouTube and search for it so they can watch a three-minute video on it. 
That's how quickly things are shifting and changing in terms of them wanting the computer to speak to them so they can get the information faster rather than having to go and try and figure it all out for themselves. So this is how important artificial intelligence is. And there's a good chance that pretty much all the ads you're already seeing, whether it's on Facebook, whether it's on Google, all of them already are tailored to you because already there's artificial intelligence working behind the scenes, basically saying, who is this person I'm speaking to? Who is this person looking at my information? If you're not doing that in your business already, then you'll be failing. And within five years, you'll be out of business. Does that mean you have to be a Google or Facebook? No, but there's certain things you can do, and I'm going to share with that with you in a moment. But I just wanted to add one more thing about this. A lot of people thought that the Apple uh, conference last, last week was like, you know, not such a big deal. It was a big deal. This is one of the things they talked about. Siri is now learning Chinese. So, so basically, most of the things that happened uh, and, and that Cook talked about at the Apple conference were more to do with China. And the reason for that is there's already double as many people on the internet in China as there are in America. Right, so, so they know their market in the future is not America. In fact, America already actually uh, is, is, um, is now only about a third of all of Apple's business. Apple is no longer, uh, and for some time has not been an American business, which is why when people complain that it's not actually uh, paying tax, which came up recently, it's actually missing the point. They're not American anyway. Nothing is built in, very little is built in America, very little is sold in America. It's all overseas. It's an international business. And if your business is not international like that, within the next five years, there's a good chance you'll be taken out of business by someone who is does not mean you need to be a technology company. What it means is that there are a couple of uh, 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 platforms now which are based on artificial intelligence. And a lot of the people out there who are making the money or you're hearing about are the ones that are on a platform of some sort and at the same time where they understand that it's no longer about the middleman and it's no longer about their size. So here's one thing I want to share with you which you can apply straight away. And it's the concept that in the past, and some of us even today, have a thought process that our biggest protection about against big. Our biggest protection if we're a small company and we're against a big company is that at least we are more personal. We can be more personal. At least we can say, well, look, they don't know you like we know you. If I'm a coach or a trainer, I can say, I can know you really well. You go to a big company, they'll, they'll just treat you like a number. Right? If I'm a, I'm a store, a corner store, I can say, hey, look, when you come in, I know your name. I know what you're interested in. You go out to the supermarket, they don't know. Well, they didn't know, they do know now. In fact, they know better than you will know. The reason that Borders goes out of business is because Amazon knows you better. And when you show up on Amazon and you want to buy a book, you actually expect Amazon will know what you want to read better than you know what you want to read. You want them to give that to you. So this is the difference of, we used to think big was just information. Hey, hey, you know, or, or, or choice. Look, go to the supermarket, lots of choice, lots of content, but it doesn't mean they know you when what you're really looking for is more direction. It's like no good having the map if you don't have someone saying, hey, I know you, you want to go this way. So we used to think as long as we're, more per as long as we're smaller, we can be more personal. As we know, this is no longer the case because all the bigger companies, because they've got information on you, they have become more personal than you ever can be when you're small. But it's not because they're big. It's because they've invested in one thing, which is a fundamental driver of all businesses over the next five to 10 years. And it's a word called customer, two words, called customer intimacy. So what is customer intimacy? Is when you, when you when, it doesn't matter if you're using Netflix, if you're using you know, your Apple your iTunes, if you're using your Amazon. Um, when you go there, you, you, Facebook, you have a sense of intimacy when you're there, which is, look, I feel like I'm known here and I'm gonna be not, my time's not gonna be wasted by going and doing stuff which isn't relevant to me. They're taking the effort to know me. One of the most annoying things we can ever have today is opening up our inbox and having someone we've just done business with recently trying to sell us something that really they should know we already bought from them. It's like, we bought that from you already. Why are you trying to sell that same thing to me again? Five, 10 years ago, we thought, oh, that's okay. They don't have that kind of information. Today, we expect them to have that kind of information. So if you're not already doing that with your customers where everyone is getting your personalized choice and personalized service, which you can't do as a human, but you can do by using the right systems, then you start to move somewhere. You know, Wealth Dynamics, as you know, allows us to be able to see people in different profiles, and that makes all the difference to us being able to say different people need to be doing different things in different ways. And so it's possible in any industry to do that. In fact, it's essential. And the customer industry comes from two things. One of them is obviously the customer intelligence side, which is how do you actually collect data? So if you're not collecting information every single time you're meeting a customer, you're missing out. And there's some simple, easy ways this afternoon I'll show you how to do that. And then the other, second one is customer care. No point, like the government has more customer intelligence than anybody, but it doesn't mean that they have customer care, which means you still don't feel intimate with the government. 
But if you've got an element of customer care, which is here's the mind, here's the heart, you bring the two together, so you really are caring about that information, you're keeping it private, what needs to be kept private, you're sharing uh, with them what things are relevant. Care actually is something that a computer, even right now and even as it gets more intelligent, will not be able to do as well as humans can do. So we've still got an upper hand in the future when it comes to the battle of the robots. However, at this point, having this in and knowing that the only reason that you should be caring with someone is not to just give them something today where you don't collect information, is giving something, getting that information, and being able to use it within your business right now as well. So I'm sharing this as a fundamental to say, what are you doing right now in your business that allows that to happen? Uh, here's an example that I'll give in our business of what I do. This is uh, some really simple uh, platforms that I use. I'm, I'm not someone in technology, but I use these different platforms. Twitter, many of you, hands up who's using Twitter today? Okay, most people who use Twitter, what I've seen in social media is that most social media focuses at how you use it to broadcast. And how do you actually get your message out or how do you build your brand using Twitter? I don't use it for that at all. So I've got about 40,000 people following me that at some point decided they want to follow me, but I'm not so interested in what those 40,000 are seeing and hearing. I'm hoping that the ones who are interested in what I'm interested in will keep following me, but I'm more interested in how I use Twitter not to broadcast, but to receive. How do I use it to get to the right people and the right information that's right for me? So for example, with Fast Forward, I created a list on Fast Forward, and I basically went to all the people I wanted to follow who were doing things with the future, the people who had great information. I wanted to collect all that, do I go to Twitter to look at all that? No, because it's going to take me too long to see it. I want a way that within five minutes, I can get all the latest information in the right way. So I use this platform, uh, one which is for the media, which is called uh, Pulse, which many of you could have used on the iPad. That collects in one place all my information and news, so I don't just look at the news every day. I look here at the key stuff, and then I go to my Twitter list, which shows up on this, which is a site called paper.ly that I'm sure some of you use. And paper.ly basically takes that same list and sends me an email every day, which is my own personal newspaper. And that newspaper gives me, it figures out exactly what's more useful, what's more interesting. Uh, it shows what's a video, what's, a, uh, uh, what's an article. But it's coming from the people that I want to follow. So here's something, you know, here's something from TechCrunch. There's people who are individuals who are on here as well. They'll post all the different things up. I'll spot the things that I'm interested in. And then what I'll do is I'll basically every day plan that over breakfast for 30 minutes, I'm reading my own personal newspaper, and then others who want to subscribe, they can subscribe to the newspaper as well. They can follow what I'm following, but fundamentally now I funneled in all the information in a way that gives me what I need and that builds my brand every day. So I can then every day be an expert. And the reason that this is so important is that there was a day when being an expert meant being a teaching teacher. A teaching teacher is someone who says, I have a body of knowledge. I've got a body of knowledge, come listen to me because I learned all this stuff. I've got qualifications or I've worked with these mentors and so, and, and this is including some of the top professional speakers here in America. Certainly a lot of the coaches, trainers, people who are saying, look, I learned stuff, I, I, I got stuff to teach you. Well, that stuff's out of date already. No one wants to go and they can find that online. That doesn't take intelligence to have that. So today, no one wants to go and follow someone who's saying, this is what I was teaching five years ago, 10 years ago. This means if you're not already updating your product every year the way that Apple does, that you have a, you know, it's like I have a Roger Hamilton 3.0, I have a Roger Hamilton 4.0. It's like every year I've got new information. Why? Because I can't rely on being a teaching teacher. I got to rely on being a leading learner. I've got to be learning all the time and if you think about it, the people you really are attracted to wanting to learn from today are the ones who you know next year would have learned new things. So they're the ones you want to follow. Why is this so important? Because most of us are looking backwards instead of forwards. We're looking down the river instead of up the river. And that one shift to say, I'm going to start looking up the river and I'm going to judge how good I am by how much new things I'm learning in my niche, then of course it means you need to niche more. A lot of people niche and they forget that niching doesn't mean niching and being a teaching teacher. Because that's not going to help you. It's actually going to make you smaller. But niching and learning learner, which means you're now actually using things like Twitter, Facebook, and others, your social media as a receiver of the right information that you can then use in a way that becomes valuable, that changes everything. So uh, let me just, before I ask everyone to just see how that might uh, affect you within what you're doing, let me just share this with you. There is a hashtag there. So uh, I ask you who's here on Twitter. Hands up who is on Twitter and also happens to have your mobile phone with you today here. Mobile phone? Uh -huh, okay. Uh, I think you call them cell phones here in America. All right. Uh, I'm going to be asking you to do this as we go into a little conversation. Take out your cell phone. In fact, take it out now. If you have it, take it out. 
Do you remember the days in seminars that they used to say, if you have a cell phone, turn it off? <laughs> this, is the opposite, this is the opposite. You've got a cell phone, turn it on. Uh, but turn on silent. Uh, turn it on. And when you have your cell phone open, go to Twitter. Well, you see that there's free wireless here, right? So you can go onto, onto Twitter and basically just post something with that hashtag. That hashtag there, the hash FFYB2012. So whatever you post with that hashtag, and then obviously it comes up as a link, and then you can click on it, and you'll see who else is in this room right now that you could uh, potentially connect up with once you go have a look at them, what they're up to. So any learnings you're getting from today, any key things you liked it all the way through today, just post things up on there, see who else is on there as well, connect up to them as well. And again, that's just another element of just how quickly, as we go through a day like this, not just will you be doing this, but there's people around the world. When we do our live cast with our change makers this afternoon, then there's going to be an opportunity for people around the world to kind of hear what you guys are sharing and talking about as well. All right, so while some of you are doing that, let me ask everyone to just take this first wave, this first wave, which is about the idea that artificial intelligence makes us have to be more human. I'll say that again. Artificial intelligence makes us have to be more human. It makes us have to care more, but it makes us have to care more about how intelligent we are with others. So when they do come with the map to say, well, look, I'm trying to find out more about health, or look, I'm trying to find out more about how to be uh, good with my children as they grow, or look, I, I'm trying to find out how to you know, build my wealth more effectively, you don't just say, here's the map. You actually say, well, I know who you are, and I know where you want to go, and I know you're here right now, so you probably want to go here, then turn left, then turn right, and that's where it is. You're providing direction, not information, because you have that information with you already. So ask yourself, well, what could you do already that if you had better information on your customers, could allow you already to transform the results you'd be getting from them and want them to go out and share with even more people today? We can take a moment from that very first wave, just have a discussion with the person next to you as to what it is that you think you could already apply from this first wave, artificial intelligence everywhere.